Hey guys, and welcome back to The Movement Online. Tonight, Andrew is going to be continuing our series called Fix It Jesus, where we look at the different miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on earth. Also, at 7.15, we're going to be continuing our Zoom groups. This is where you get to connect with your life group and your life group leaders. If you want to connect with these, make sure you sign up at the job form link below. If you did this last week, don't worry about doing it again. You're good to go. So, somebody has sent me uh, a video want me to do commentary on I never hadn't seen this video yet um but your boy Dala you know how he 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 all the time want to to do something right by the fans so we're gonna watch this video let's see what had happened all right it looks like somebody's backyard they um they got money they got a pool uh oh what's that what's what is that is that a bear that's a grizzly. No, that's not a grizzly bear. That, that's a cow. Oh, snap. Oh, look at that. That cow's in the pool. Who? Cows can swim. I didn't know that. A cow's like a fish. And that pit bull jump. That ain't a pit bull. That's one of those police dogs. So the two police dogs or the wolves. No, those are wolves. The wolves are getting that cow. That must be a wild cow. Oh, they can swim too. Who knew wolves can swim? Them wolves can swim and that cow can swim. The wolves and the cow and they swimming and that wolf is going, oh snap. Look at that. Oh, look at the, that's the Lone Ranger. Look at him. Look at him. Look at that guy. He is on, he got a, he got a lasso. He got a lasso. They got the Lone Ranger comes and grabs that that cow see that's a cow that that's a bull that's not even a cow and those wolves they better take that gun out pop some caps in that those wolves the wolves oh here comes a buddy here comes old buddy that must be his house he must be friends with the wolves he must be friends with the, look in the background them two two cowboys the dallas two dallas cowboys are grabbing that that big old bull and that man had freed that wolf that's some crazy stuff. That must be out in the country. I hope I did it. I don't even know. I, I never knew no no cows can swim and stuff like that. They must have went to, they must have been like park fish or something. But uh, the two Dallas Cowboys came and saved that cow from um, from the two wolves. And them wolves, them wolves, them wolves be eating everything. And so, uh, yeah. I'm glad it all helped out. That them, them Dallas Cowboys must have been friends with that 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 cow. That must have been that that pet cow. Um, yeah, that's your boy Dollar. That's all I got. Hey Bella, what kind of cheese do you like on your hamburger? Um, well, I would say cheddar cheese because it's orange, and I think white cheese is like really plain and overrated. And I like orange cheese. So. Nice. Yeah. CJ, what kind of cheese would you put on a hamburger and why? Cheddar, because it's all natural and it's straight from the source. Hey, so I was wondering, what kind of cheese do you like on a hamburger? Swiss. And why? Swiss cheese. Why? Because it's the holy cheese. He's wrong. American, because in God we trust. My favorite cheese on a hamburger is smoked Gouda cheese because it has the smoky taste is super good. Yeah. Hey fam, this is your boy Shane. I'm so excited about tonight's message. Hope you guys are doing great. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 14. This is where you're gonna be camped out. Andrew's gonna bring a strong word. But often we can't really see what God wants us to do um, because we are only thinking like of what could be done or what could go wrong. Um, we're actually seeing this through a human perspective or from a human perspective. But we don't think and we often forget the fact that we serve a ginormous God who is all-powerful, who by his very word sustains life. He holds life all together. And so tonight you're going to actually see how God can take something and someone who is insignificant and change the entire narrative. Go ahead and buckle up, get ready for the impact, and let's go. Grove Town students, uh, 
wanted to come to you today again from my back porch and just say hello. We miss you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, but right now we're in a series called Fix It Jesus. We're in week three, and today I want to bring you a familiar passage, one that you guys probably have heard many times before, but it's uh, the story, the miracle uh, of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And so we're going to take it from Matthew chapter 14. So if you have your Bibles, you want to scroll on your device, uh, you can look at Matthew chapter 14. We're going to be looking at verses 13 through 21. So if you want to read along with me, please feel free to do that. And let's just kind of talk through uh, this, this story, this happening, this historical moment, and see the, see the things that we can learn from that, how we can be challenged by it, how we can be uh, encouraged by it, and what God can do in my life and in your life because of his word. So let's dive right in. Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse, starting with verse 13, it says, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. Verse 14, When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, and healed the sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. So before we go on to verse 16, let's just pause there for just a second and talk about what's going on here. So Jesus is with his disciples, and they're looking to kind of go off and get some, probably some much-needed rest. And, uh, but he heard the crowds following him, and they weren't just a few people, it was a lot of folks, but they were following him, and he, he, he went over by boat, he landed, and apparently the crowds had kind of already gone to where he was going to be, and, and so he stopped, he had compassion on them, he says that he healed the sick, he spoke to them, he taught them, and then as it began to be night, right, uh, as the evening came, uh, the disciples came to him, and, and, and they basically said, Hey, listen, Jesus, this is not uh, in the middle of town. This is not somewhere where somebody can go home and, and grab a quick uh, dinner or, or, or go to the local uh, market and buy some food. We're in a remote place. It's getting late. Here's our suggestion. Send the crowds away. We've, they've been with us all day, uh, and they were beginning to get a little annoyed. Maybe you could hear in the disciples' voice. But he says, they said, send the crowds away, and so they can go out from here, which is remote, and go back into some of the villages and find something to eat. So the disciples' plan was a very logical plan. It was probably something, honestly, that I would say. You know what? We've been ministering all day. It's time to get some rest. Let's send these folks away. Let them go get something to eat on their own. It's very logical logical, right? Uh, there's no McDonald's around here. There's no Dairy Queen. There's no Hardee's. There's no whatever. We don't have anywhere for them to go and eat something, so they need to go somewhere, and the crowd was beginning to be a nuisance to the disciples anyway. So we pick up in verse 16. Jesus replies to them, and he says, he says, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Now think about that. In just a minute, we're going to find out how many people were actually there, um, but it wasn't just a few. It wasn't just a family or two. There were thousands and thousands of people at this gathering. And he says to them, you give them something to eat. So again, the disciples were kind of thinking logical, right? They were thinking, well, what do we, how do we do this? Miracles, as we know, and this is one that we're about to see, are not logical. It actually says over in uh, the Gospel of John, this, this uh, story is told in all four Gospels. So over in John, it gives, a, it gives us a little bit more detail, and it says that, that one of the disciples named Philip spoke up, and he says, where do we buy bread for all these people? You know, we just heard Jesus say, you give them something to eat. And Philip says, well, where are we going to buy uh, uh, bread for all these people? Where are we going to buy food for all these people? There's nowhere around. Even if we had the money, which we don't, but even if we had the money, wouldn't that be foolish to spend 200 denarii, which uh, if, you, if you look at that in the Greek, um, it's basically half of year's wages or maybe even almost a year's worth of, of um, income, that if they had, would they go spend it on one meal for these thousands of people that were following after Jesus? He was, again, thinking kind of logically, didn't make sense to him. And when Jesus says, you give them something to eat, um, you know, the disciples were like, what, what's, what do you mean, give them something to eat? Now, here's what's interesting. We know this is a miracle, 
right? We know the story, feeding the 5,000. What could have happened at this point is that Jesus could have sat down to his disciples and said, listen, guys, they're hungry. I have compassion on them. You guys are annoyed, I understand, but, but they need something to eat. I'm going to feed them. He could have called down a, a steak dinner and lobster from heaven. He could, have, he could have done the manna thing all over again, right? He could have done any of that. He could have said, I'm going to prepare all this for them. But he didn't. Here's what he said. We're at verse 17. Let's look at that. It says here, Jesus speaking again here, or excuse me, the disciples, it says, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. And then Jesus said, bring them here to me. Bring them here to me. This is interesting. Again, Jesus could have, could have created a, a great feast for these thousands of people, but he wanted to use what they had. He wanted to use what the people brought, right? And so they didn't find much. In fact, again, kind of in one of the other Gospels, uh, a guy uh, named Andrew, one of the disciples, cool name, by the way, he was the brother of Simon Peter, he finds this young man, this young boy, it says, and the boy has five loaves of bread and two fish, and that's it. So one of the questions that I had, and this is just kind of a side note, but I wonder who else had food. I wonder if it was just this one kid. I can't imagine, honestly, that it was just this one boy who happened to bring a snack that day. My guess is other people had some food, but they began to look around and they began to think, you know, what is my little bit gonna contribute? What is, what is my little loaf of bread or my pack of crackers or whatever I brought, what is that actually gonna contribute to these thousands of people, the needs of these thousands of people. So you know what they probably did? They probably just stuck it back in their pocket, stuck it back in their pouch, whatever they had, their purse or whatever, and said, you know what, I, I'm not gonna do that. It's a lesson we can learn there in just a moment. But Jesus used what he had, he used what was around, and he used this generous gift from this young boy who said, you know what, I've got something to give. I'll give you all that I've got. All I have is some bread and, and two fish. And if you want to use that, then you can certainly use it and I'll give it to you. And so we see again in verse 19, it says, He directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed those. It says, He gave thanks and he broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Verse 20, they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, excuse me, 5,000 men besides women and children. So probably 15,000, maybe even upwards of 20,000 people were there. That was one miracle uh, in, in, in itself, is that how they organized all of this. And obviously the miracle of how Jesus provided for their needs. They gave all they had. This one boy gave, gave five loaves of bread and two fish. And so I've got a couple of closing questions for you. We're gonna wrap up here, but one thing I want you to understand and, and kind of maybe wrestle with and ask yourself is this question. Will you offer up what you have even when you think it's too small or insignificant? Will you give of your life even though sometimes you think, well, I, I'm only a sixth grader or I'm only a freshman. I, I can't do all that you're asking me to do here, God. Will you do that? Will you have faith enough in Jesus that he's gonna provide for your needs and also that he can use your life to further his glory, even when you think that your life may be too small, too insignificant, not meaningful enough, and you don't have uh, enough to give because Jesus will use that. The second question I have for you today is this. Will you have enough faith to allow Jesus to work in your life even when you don't see his ultimate plan? And see, here's the disciples. They, they were thinking logically, right? They weren't thinking that Jesus was about to do a miracle. They just wanted the crowds to go home. But sometimes in our lives, we do that same thing, right? We don't have faith enough in Jesus to, to think that he can use us to do uh, amazing things. We think, well, no, this is, this is the logical way to think. This is the way that I think makes sense to me as a human. Are you kidding me? As a human, don't think that way. Understand that God is all-powerful. 
Jesus comes uh, to give us an abundant life. He comes to do a work in and through our lives. And so my challenge to you today is this. And the bottom line basically is this, is that we need to trust Jesus to meet our needs and to use our lives for his glory even when we think we're insignificant or we think we don't have much to offer. God bless you guys. I want to pray for you real quick. Father, thank you for these uh, young men and young women. Uh, God, I thank you that we can learn through your word. Uh, the feeding of the 5,000, probably a story that we've heard multiple times. But God, you, you hopefully, um, at least I know in my life, you've, you've taught me anew uh, that I need to bring whatever I have to you. Even when I think my life is, is not worth it or when I think it's insignificant, uh, Jesus, you will use it. I know you will, and I have faith in that, and I thank you for that, using something uh, like me, someone like me, and our students, our pastors, our leaders. God, I pray that you would bless them, uh, that you would work in their lives. God, that you would continue to do amazing things uh, through them. And God, give us the faith, give us the courage, give us the boldness uh, just to hand over and, have a, and, and hand over whatever we have to you and say, God, use it. Use my life to give you the honor and glory. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in with us tonight. Don't forget that at 715, we're going to be hosting our Zoom groups. We hope we'll see you there.